the injuries on Jody Arias' finger, left finger, right finger. The key's the left. Let's bring in Jeff Gold real quick. Jeff, where are we going with this? Is it because at that left finger, that's the abuse finger, right? That's what she testified, yeah. that he kicked her, and that's how she broke her finger. Right, and I thought that might have been the only Perry Mason moment. It was, you know, a good cross-examination, but at one point, Juan Martinez got her to admit, actually twice, that it occurred on, the injury occurred on June 4th the day of the murder. And then later he asked the question again and she backed off it. Uh, sometimes you shouldn't keep asking the same stuff when you got good information. But that's why Kirk Nurmi is going right to it now, it. right in the beginning. Okay, you're not gonna miss a moment. We'll pause the action, we'll pick. That's right. That's it. You know, that, that's everything because of that admission that she made uh, uh, during cross-examination. The prosecutor's theory is that uh, that was injured during the murder, and she seemed to ad admit that and then later denied it. But uh, uh, that wasn't in her direct testimony. So Kurt and Ermey is going directly to that. After all, in the direct case, remember, she held up the finger, and it was very dramatic, you know, like if the glove... Uh, uh, doesn't fit. So the finger is broken. I must have been abused. So it was a key point in his direct. The prosecutor made a real good point on cross about it, and Kurt has gone right to it in the beginning to try to rehabilitate her. Okay, so here's the way I understand it. Correct me if I'm wrong. The prosecutor, Juan Martinez, showed the photo of her with the arm around her sister, and that was from May, right? And there's no, it doesn't look like uh, the finger's broken, right? When right, she well, says it happened in January, and that's when she got kicked and abused right. by Travis Alexander. You know, it's debatable. Her, her fingers are curled. Some people see it as, as bent. Some people see it as not bent. I think what she said on the stand twice where she admitted that it happened on June 4th, I mean, that's what we talk about with cross-examination. You get the defendant uh, talking about different dates and different times, and eventually they screw up their story if they're lying. And that was Juan Martinez's theory, to get her to get confused so that she would tell the truth. Okay. So, again, and it looks like we're heading next into the journal entries, because that's damning for her. When on one hand, Travis Alexander is this uh, uh, abuser, but in these journal entries, he's the greatest. Yeah, abso absolutely. Juan Martinez made a lot of hay out of that. Uh, you wouldn't write that down. I mean, you know, if you're going to be abused and you're going to hold it in, maybe you're at least going to write it in your journal. It was an extremely significant event. Uh, what would you use your journal for except for to record significant events and it wasn't there? The absence of that is Juan Martinez's uh, uh, proof. Okay. Again, while, while they're getting things set in court, gives uh, Jeff a, a chance to let us know what lies ahead. Not only are we going to have this, Kirk Nurmi asking questions, rehabilitating his client. There's no recross, so Juan Martinez gets no more cracks at her, correct? That's right. Unless there was something very, very, very prejudicial that on special request had to be corrected, there is no recross. So after we're done with this redirect, the next thing we will move into other defense witnesses, and we expect uh, two experts, defense experts, to testify as to uh, post-traumatic stress disorder to try to explain why she would have a memory loss, and also a domestic violence expert to get us into the head of a domestic violence victim, because in a in a a self-defense where there's domestic violence, it, the jury has to put themselves in the shoes of a domestic violence victim in determining what a reasonable response would be. So we're going to hear those. There's also possible lay witnesses. Matt McCartney is on the list. There are some friends of Travis, friends of Jody. So we'll see. But the defense case comes next. And the, the rest the, of the, the experts case. are huge, right? I mean, that, that lays out. That's the blackouts. We, you know, we got we a direct right. examination. You know, that's where we get the blackout. She shot him and that's it. Yeah, it, it, you know, that's why she's testifying first, to lay the predicate facts for the experts so that, that when they testify, they are going to now explain, use those facts that she said to explain why she did it. Why would she have a memory loss? Uh, why would she, uh, you know, react when he drops a camera in the way she did? Is that reasonable, uh, you know, sort of like, um, you know, a, a hand shy a puppy, you know, if a puppy's been hit, then you come near them with your hand and they shy away. That's not like a puppy who hasn't been hit. So they're going to say a domestic violence victim reacts differently than you or I if we haven't been abused. So it's very crucial to the defense. Without the jury believing those experts, there is no defense. Got it. Okay, let's take a break. So you see a shot of Juan Martinez. You want to